In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this 40 gallon breeder into a sump. Hey, my name is Abe, and welcome back to another video. This build is going to be for my 140 gallon frag tank. All right, so the game plan here is I'm going to have these three baffles, one there, one there, and one here, like a floating one. Water's going to come down into this acrylic block box that's going to have filter floss. This is also where the skimmer is going to be. Water's going to flow over this baffle into this DSB compartment, then flow up again over this baffle, down through this filter sponge here, under this baffle, and go back into the tank via the return. Alright, so the first step is to get everything marked up. Wipe everything down with some rubbing alcohol. Alright, so I got everything marked where I want the baffles to go. I just want to show you this piece of glass. It fits in here just like that. And at the height of these baffles, I plan for, um, I already know what skimmer I'm going to get. I'm going to get one of those Deltec 600s, and uh, this is a good height for those skimmers. So this baffle is going to sit in here like this, right? Uh, I want it flat against the, uh, the floor of the tank. So what I'm going to have to do is just take a razor blade and cut out the silicone right here and right here before I silicone this thing in. The next thing I'm going to do is mask off where I'm going to silicone on these baffles as well as on the tank, on the sump itself so that I don't get silicone all over the place. I got everything masked off. That's probably the least exciting part of this whole thing. The reason I put those supports there, the cardboard and the wood, was so that I can set this thing like this. So obviously I'm going to silicone in this side first, and then I'm going to let that dry, then I'll hit the other side with silicone. So I had to run to the store to get some silicone because the silicone that I have was actually expired. When you're buying silicone, make sure that you get GE Silicone 1. There's also GE Silicone 2 and a whole bunch of other types of silicone. They're all going to say 100% silicone somewhere on the, on the label. But if you flip it over and you look at the top or the back, the GE Silicone 1 mentions nothing about mold prevention, whereas the the silicone that you do not want to get, the GE Silicone 2, talks about having 10 year mold protection or something like that. So make sure that you get the GE Silicone 1 if you're going to use it for your aquarium. The other thing that I want to talk about for silicone is that this type of silicone is more of is, is a sealant. There's a different type of silicone that tank manufacturers use for building aquariums and that's more of an adhesive it's a totally different silicone the only thing i'm trying to tell you is don't think that you're going to build like a hundred gallon tank with this ge over-the-counter silicone from walmart all right so before i start siliconing i want to show you some tools that i made these are just chopsticks uh, but on the end of these chopsticks, I taped on these pieces of plastic. This is just a cut up piece of credit card. These are tools that are going to help me um, smooth out the bead. You know, a lot of people use their fingers, but I'm going to use these plastic tools that I made to make it look nice and uniform. All 
All right, here goes nothing. All right, so if you, you can see the silicone bead from the side here, it looks pretty good. It's pretty uniform. The uh, tape is in a good position. You can see the result of using those tools. You see how that bead of silicone is nice and smooth? It's not going to be easy to get in there with a razor blade and just scrape stuff off. Alright, so I'm going to take a break, chill out for a little bit, maybe drink a beer, and uh, let this dry. I'll come back in a couple hours. We'll see. Alright guys, so the silicone has cured for a little over an hour. Um, it's strong enough for me to put the sump down flat. I'm going to go ahead and hit the other side of the baffle here. So next, um, I already lined up this floating baffle right here. You may be asking yourself, how the heck am I going to get this big old silicone tube in there? Well, I'm not. I got this. Alright, so that's going to do it for tonight. I got all the silicone on each side of each baffle. Tomorrow I'm going to clean all the silicone up. Hey, welcome back everybody. It's day two right now. Time to clean up some silicone. Alright guys, thanks for watching. That's going to do it for this build. Pretty simple process. You can certainly do one yourself. Remember to get GE Silicone 1. You can put in a refugium compartment, put taller baffles, shorter baffles, more compartments. 
the only limit is your imagination. The last thing I gotta do, which I'm not gonna show, is I gotta drill a hole in the wall of the sump so I can put this float valve in. The only thing is that I have to wait until I figure out exactly how the plumbing's gonna go. That's gonna determine exactly where the return pump is gonna be and that's gonna determine where I can put this. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can catch more of my 140 gallon build.